Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the session logistic support function of Biosphere Reserves. In my presentation, I will explain what is actually meant by logistic support function of Biosphere Reserves. I will also uh, give an example of Biosphere Reserves and their roles for research and environmental monitoring. And I will focus on education as is carried out in Biosphere Reserves. Now, as we all know, uh, Biosphere Reserves have three interrelated functions. A conservation function, a development function, and a research and monitoring function in a world network. In fact, it's the last uh, issue that I just mentioned which is meant by logistic support function. Logistic support means that a biosphere reserve should have all the physical and human infrastructure available to conduct research on ecosystems, environmental monitoring, but also research on human environmental interactions and education notably education for sustainable development. Moreover, networking uh, is key within the world network of biosphere reserves and biosphere reserves should have the capacity to interact and in exchange information within and among the world network of biosphere reserves. Let me introduce a project um, that I was in charge of whilst I was still working at UNESCO. Uh, this is a project uh, called Global Change in Mountain Reg Regions, Glockamore, and it was a nice example for research and environmental monitoring in biosphere reserves. The aims of this project was to create a global network of mountain biosphere reserves to study impacts of global change on the biophysical environment as well as the well-being of people. The project also developed a research strategy through the collaboration of scientists and biosphere reserve managers. Mountain biosphere reserves, as all biosphere reserves, include protected areas with natural environments but they also include economically used and inhabited areas, often in the lower parts of a, biosphere, of a mountain biosphere reserve, and they dispose of a research infrastructure with data sets on species, on climate, hydrology, and even economic and social parameters. Now, out of the world network of biosphere reserves, as it existed at the time, as you can see on the lower, on the upper left image of this slide, we selected about 20 biosphere reserves in the major mountain ranges of the world, as you can see on the right image uh, of the slide. Thanks to a series of uh, international workshops, um, we identified key topics um, that are of importance to mountain biosphere reserves. These are climate, land use changes, cryosphere, water systems, and so on. And out of these key issues, we developed a research strategy uh, on how to measure uh, global change impacts on mountain biosphere reserves using 20 plus biosphere reserves around the world. The project consisted of a nice collaboration of over 300 scientists and biosphere reserve managers. I'll give you one example, which is the Katunsky Biosphere Reserve in the Russian Federation. For example, with regard to biodiversity, 
the team at the site identified eight high altitude plant species that will disappear owing to climate change. With regard to water and water balance, glacial melt was assessed over the last 100 years using repeat photography, for example, of the Gebler Glacier between 1897 and 2011. With regard to economy, uh, the team noted that there was a marked increase of agriculture and livestock, especially regarding the Altai morale, as well as an increase of tourism, which of course has also impacts on land use. A second example is the Huascaran Biosphere Reserve in Peru. With regard to biodiversity, a noted decrease of species, in particular frogs, were noted at high altitudes. In fact, it is assumed that frogs cannot cope with the increased ultraviolet radiation at altitudes above 3,500 meters. With regard to water and water balance, uh, there is a glacial retreat by 27% in the Cordillera Blanca since 1970. Land use changes, as you can see on the photo. Uh, there is an increased habitat fragmentation, which is caused by wildfires, excessive pastoralism, but also mining. So an enormous problem for land use and land use changes. In the field of economy, agriculture and livestock husbandry are threatened by water shortages um, through an increased evapotranspiration. So these two examples show that biosphere reserves uh, are used for research and monitoring. In fact, there are long-term research and monitoring sites because most of the biosphere reserves do have available data sets on biophysical and socioeconomic conditions. With those, you can monitor trends of climate change, but also in the larger context of global change. You can develop adaptive measures towards these issues. And um, in the individual biosphere reserves can inform exchange information with similar biosphere reserves, in this case mountains, within the world network of biosphere reserves. Now, biosphere reserves also serve education, formal and non-formal education, environmental education, education for sustainable development, and higher education. This is also important for UNESCO, as UNESCO is not only in charge of science and biosphere reserves, but also the lead agency for education within the United Nations system. Again, I will show you a couple of projects that I was in charge with when I was still working at the UNESCO MAP Secretariat. At the time, we developed education, an education kit on combating desertification, which was intended for primary schools. And this education contained education kit contained several um, publications, a teacher's guide, um, a whole publication on case studies on combating desertification throughout the world, and other learning material for school children. And this education kit was then sent to UNESCO national commissions and were used also, among others, in biosphere reserves. Another project that I was involved with, with was uh, developing teaching resource kits for secondary schools, uh, one on mountains and another one for dryland countries, basically the two thematic uh, themes for which I was in charge while I was in UNESCO. Again, these kits were distributed through uh, UNESCO national commissions and were used in schools near or within biosphere reserves. Of course, individual biosphere reserves also focus on environmental education within their specific sites. This is an example of the Palatine Forest Biosphere Reserve in Germany. 
In the center photograph, you see the visitor center with the solar panels on the rooftop. And this visitor center, which also houses the administration, in this visitor center, there's a, um, a little museum where you can explore and learn about the environment indoors. But there's also a canopy walkway. In fact, the first canopy walkway that was created in Germany so that people can learn about trees and their canopies uh, from a short distance and not from the ground with interpretive signage all over the canopy walkway. The Palatine Forest Biosphere Reserve has, is running also a number of education projects for youth and children and in fact um, uh, trains them as junior rangers so that children learn about the environment but moreover also about the culture of this Palatine Forest Biosphere Reserve. Research and environmental education exists also in other parts of the world. This is the Bar Atoll Biosphere Reserve in the Maldives. And as you may know, the Maldives has a lot of high-end luxury hotels or tourist resorts. Now, especially the five-star tourist hotels, tourist resorts, also have their own marine laboratories where marine scientists study the composition of the, of the fauna and flora of the marine areas of the reefs uh, surrounding the tourist resorts. And adjacent to the laboratory, there are also, there's also a visitor center where tourists who are visiting the resorts can learn about the marine environment and its problems such as coral, coral uh, bleaching which is the main problem in most of the tropical waters of the world. Higher education also is very important in biosphere reserves. Here is the East Vattenskab Landscape Biosphere Reserve in Sweden, where students go out and conduct active field research, for example, on the bentos in this lacustrian biosphere reserve. So logistic support function really means that biosphere reserves are living laboratories for research, monitoring and education and indeed for all age groups, starting from pre-school education here in the Maccabi Belombre Biosphere Reserve in Mauritius, but also to highly sophisticated research and monitoring as is shown on this uh, photo of the Black Forest Biosphere Reserve in Germany with a weather station. Uh, this weather station feeds into the national observation system for weather forecasting and climate studies uh, of all of Germany. And with this, I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.